started last week was encapsulation. And as far as C is concerned, that essentially means what are called structures. Uh, structures are a way of taking multiple pieces of data that belong together because they define one real world entity, like say a baseball team or what we were developing, a film. Right? A film has a title, a release date, a gross box office, et cetera. It has a whole bunch of pieces of data that go into defining what it is. If we kept all that stuff separate, we'd have five, six, a dozen variables that are all living off by themselves with no, no semantic relationship between those things at all. Uh, so this is we're going to collect them all. We're going to group that data. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's generally the first step in what's called encapsulation. You're taking these two, uh, very different things, all this, these pieces of data, and you're grouping them together. You're encapsulating them into one thing, one entity. Uh, now, in object-oriented programming languages that support full encapsulation, you also have the protection of that data and the grouping of functionality that acts on that data. Uh, but in a programming language like C, you don't have that. You, don't, you have kind of weak encapsulation is what we kind of called it. So as a really quick uh, review here, remember that the way that you can create structures is using that type def that we used earlier when we looked at enumerated types. But instead of an enum type, we're defining a struct. We give it a name, which is generally upper camel cased. Uh, in this case, we've got film and date, so there's only one word, so it's uppercase on the first letter, lowercase everywhere else. And then the member variables are all generally lower camel cased. Uh, and unlike an, uh, an enumerated type, each one is ended with a, it's a dec more of a declaration rather than a list, so it's e each one is ended with a semicolon. Uh, and if, you, uh, if you've got composition, that is where one structure is composed of another structure, the order that you declare those things matters. That date has to come before the film because the film uses the date. And so to even know about what a date is, it needs to come first and be declared first. Okay. Uh, th then we went into, well, how do you create one? Well, you can use the dot operator, the indirect component selection operator. It's a dot. So you can use the dot operator to access each one of those things, the title, the runtime in the minutes, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, or you can uh, use a pointer to it. And in which case, if you've got a pointer, then you use the arrow operator instead. So what I want to do is I want to uh, 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 continue where we left off last time. Uh, that Creating a, uh, an instance of a film, that's a lot of code. That's like a half a dozen lines of code each time that you're going to do that. So what we're going to, if we want to create one two, a film, two films, three films, if we want to create a dozen film instances, then maybe we should create a function to help us out, uh, help us do that. And so we started by cr having this function called create film. It returns a film star, a film pointer, right? It takes the title as a const char star because that's a string, uh, the runtime in the minutes, uh, the bo a gross bo box office, and then uh, an instance of the date structure, right? If you're going to return a pointer, you need to dynamically allocate it with malloc. Uh, I, I'm still seeing people make the, the basic mistake of returning local variables or static arrays or things that do not exist after you return from a function because they exist in the stack and that stack frame is popped off the top when you return. You can't do that. If you're going to return a pointer to something, then you have to uh, dynamically allocate it with malloc. Well, we found out that you can reuse the size of macro because, well, uh, compilers are dumb, but they can at least go through in the film and say, oh, well, you need a char star. I know how many bytes that is. There are four bytes in an integer. Uh, there's another char star. I know how many bytes that is. A double, there are eight bytes there, et cetera, et cetera. It can count up those number of bytes and take care of that for you so that you don't have to hard code those values or do your own uh, uh, memory arithmetic. So this line created a brand new film instance. And because it's a pointer, we're going to be using the arrow operator to access each one of these things. We end up doing a deep copy of the title. Uh, we end up, the, 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 this is just a double, so runtime minutes is equal to runtime minutes. Box office gross is equal to box office gross. What about the release date, though? So F's release date, right? well, that's not just one thing. Right? I mean, it is one thing after encapsulation. But remember that the release date is the day, month, and the year. So once I, uh, once I get the release date, how do I set it to that release date's date? Right. So would this be correct? Uh, day is equal to this day. Right. 
Well, obviously, it's telling me that it's wrong. Why? What's wrong here? So f arrow release date, that's accessing the release date. Is this a date star? No, it's just a regular old date. And if you have a regular old structure, do you use the dot operator or the arrow operator? You use the dot operator. Now, why is the right-hand side wrong? Release date, is that, a regular, uh, is that a regular old structure or is it a pointer to a structure? It's a regular old structure. So do I use the arrow operator or the dot operator? Dot. Right. When you've got a pointer to a structure, you use the arrow operator. When you've got a regular old structure, no pointer, then you use the dot operator. Right. And so uh, F is a pointer, but release date, once we get there, it's just a regular old uh, uh, structure, so we use the dot operator here. You repeat that for the day, the month, and the year, so that you're copying everything over, day and year, year. All right, there we go. Of course, there's uh, another way that you can do this. You could just say that F's release date is equal to, oops, get rid of this. Uh, F's release date is equal to that release date. And more often than not, uh, the, your code will re be replaced with a mem copy, which will do all three of those things for you. Right? So I'll go ahead and leave that there as a reminder that you can actually get it done with one line instead. Okay. All right, I've got an example down here where I now have to create the Joker film. So we've got Joker, that's the title. This is the runtime in minutes, 128 minutes, two hours and eight minutes, I estimated. Uh, I don't know what the box office was, if anybody looked at that over the weekend, but I put down $300 million. I don't know what it is. Uh, what about the date here? Can I put in 2019, and I don't remember the uh, release date, but 10, uh, released at the beginning of the month sometime. Uh, this is not valid C. How would I go about doing this? I would need to create what? A? date structure, a, a date instance. Uh, I'll just call it D. Uh, and, uh, and then I would need to set each one of those things. D dot uh, day is equal to, uh, oops, uh, it was released on the first, say, uh, D dot uh, year 2019, D dot month released in October. Right? Uh, but I'm also going to show you an alternative way of doing this. What if I wanted to set all three of these things without having to worry about uh, you know, uh, three different lines of code. Well, you need to remember the order here because you don't want to go out of order and set uh, the day to the, uh, the year or the month to the year or something like that. So it goes day, month, and year. And all I need to do is provide three numbers, day, month, and year. And that's it. And note that those are, at this point, commas, OK? And then I can go ahead and pass that in. So this is, a, this is a syntactic sugar way of immediately creating a structure. And you could do the same thing, by the way, up here if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, you can generally only do this with static structures. In other words, not pointers to structures that have been dynamically allocated, but uh, things that are allocated on the uh, call stack. So this is a quick and easy way of creating something. Well, I want to make sure that this worked. I could, fire, I could fire up a debugger and, and look at each one of those things. I could, I could maybe say a bunch of print statements. Printf uh, title is equal to uh, percent %s and the line. And then joker.title, right? Is that correct? Obviously not. Why? What's wrong? This is a film star, a pointer. When you've got a pointer, what do you use? A, arrow operator instead. And so let's go ahead and run this and see that it actually works. Yeah, it worked, uh, okay, joker, right? Uh, and then, um, well, I, I wanna make sure that, the, 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 that that date worked as well. Date is equal to percent D, uh, and then that's the year, the uh, month, and then the day, proper uh, lexicographic notation there. So joker release date uh, dot year, joker, uh, release date dot uh, month, and then finally, joker release date dot day.
And let's see that it actually worked. Yeah, it looks like it works. Uh, uh, works. So OK, we're, we're, we're good here. But this is kind of tedious. And in fact, if I'm going to be doing this quite often, in other words, taking a structure and outputting it to the standard output, or maybe printing it to a file, or maybe doing a whole bunch of other things, maybe, maybe I should think about what? Writing a function to do it for me. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's have a, uh, I don't know, a void print uh, film. Right? And we'll go ahead and take a film here, uh, F. And then we'll print it out. There are two ways that I could do this. What kind of passing is that? Let me go ahead and increase the size here. Since we're developing over here. Print film, and then I pass film X, or F. It's kind of like this, int X. How am I passing x there? There are two ways that you can pass stuff to a function. Pass by value and pass by reference. So I'm passing x by value. How am I passing f by value? Meaning that everything in that structure gets copied onto the system stack, onto the call stack, and a copy of film gets, uh, gets passed to the, uh, the function. Right? Now, this isn't that big of a deal right now because there's only maybe 40, 50 bytes or so, le certainly less than 100 bytes for each film. All you have to do is look at this and count them up. Well, one, two, three, four, five, or four integers, that's four bytes each, so 16 bytes. Uh, this is another eight bytes, another eight bytes, so um, that's 32 bi uh, bytes so far. This is another eight, so that's uh, 40 bytes and maybe a bunch of other, uh, a few more bytes, but certainly less than 100 bytes. You're not, you're not going to kill the, the, the stack space by doing this. Uh, but it is far more common to, instead of passing by value, pass by reference, meaning that you're going to be passing a pointer to the film that you want to print. Okay. Now, are we going to be making changes to this film? I'm giving you a film so that you can print it out to the standard output. Does it sound like I'm going to be making changes if I'm just printing it? No. How can I make the promise that I'm not going to change it? Const. Right? You can do that with an array of integers. Well, you can certainly do that with a single film. I'm not going to make any changes to this film. Uh, I'm just simply going to print it out to the standard output. Uh, now, without you know, uh, uh, you know, getting too fancy here, let's go ahead and print out the title. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, release date and runtime in minutes. Uh, what I'll just I'll just print out the title and released on, and then I'm going to steal this down here. Uh, percent D, percent D, percent D. End the line, and then um, I'm going to steal the rest of this down here. Copy pasta, but I'm moving it, so it's not copy pasta. It's copy muva, right? and it's not Joker. It's F, and then. F, oops, comma F, uh, F and F. Uh, come on, get off that. There we go. All right. Now instead of doing this ad hoc each and every single time, I will go ahead and print uh, the film Joker. And it's not complaining that I'm not putting an ampersand in front of it. Why? It's already a pointer. Film star pointer. Film star pointer. Those things match. Now let me go ahead and run this and see that it works. It should be Joker released on 2019, uh, 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 October 1st. How could, how could we make that a little bit nicer? I want it, I want it, to, really look, uh, I want it to really look like uh, uh, a lexicographic date. In other words, not z 1, but zero 01. I could put 2 there. 2. And then the year is always going to be four, right? Because we have not reached the year 10,000 yet, and uh, there were no movies, uh, you know, more than 10,000 years ago, right? So uh, we can do this. Now, this is only going to print a space here, right? So how could I get it to print a zero instead of a leading space? I can put zero in front of it. Zero, and then I don't need to do that for the year. So that when uh, now it's going to print October, but if we have like September or July or something like that, it'll print zero one instead of that rest of the rest of the stuff. Let me run it one more time so that it's all in one line there. Ten slash zero one. Right. Well, that's great for printing the film to the standard output, but maybe I want to print somewhere else. Where else could we print? Where else could we print a string? To the file. To a file. Right. 
So maybe I want to think about this a little bit more generally. Uh, if, I, if I wanted to print it to a file, maybe I write it, copy, paste, write another uh, function to do it. Copy, paste, write another function to print it to a socket. Uh, copy, paste, write another function to print it to somewhere else, right? Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to have one function that deals with this that maybe converts a film to a string representation. Here you go, here's a string. Print it wherever you want, I don't care. You can print it to a file, you can print it to the standard output. Here's a string representation of, of that film. So I'm going to change this function now. I'm going to change it to film to string. Right. We're not going to be making any changes to it, but if we are, now we're not printing it at the standard output, instead I'm giving you a string back. So what's the, my return type going to be here? Char star, a string. Okay. All right, good. I, I'm going to want this same format here. Uh, now, if I'm going to return a char star, I need, uh, here, here's what people have uh, seen people continue to do. Result of, well, we'll just assume that it's uh, at most 100 characters, right? And then I'll print it to that string somehow, dot, blah, dot, 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 and return result. Right? Now, this is, uh, this is excellent. It's giving me a, a huge warning here. And if you compile with the wall flag, you should get the same warning. Uh, address of stack memory associated with the local variable result return. What is it yelling at me about this? Why is it yelling at me? I'm returning a stack variable, right? That result, 100 bytes, that is allocated onto the system stack. What happens to the system uh, stack, uh, stack frame when I return back to the function? It gets popped off the top and thrown away. In other words, my result is thrown away. I don't want to put it on the stack. Where do I want to put it? Where's the other place? the heap. And to do that, I need to use a char star. Result is equal to a call to malloc. Oops. And I don't know, 100 is big enough, right? Uh, we, could, uh, we, we could be uh, 100 times size of char. That's better. Uh, now, we could uh, 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 you know, get this down to an exact science. Uh, how would I compute the, uh, the size of the result string? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, then, uh, thir uh, so here, let, let me write this down. 13 plus 4 for the year plus 2 for the two uh, 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 slashes plus another 2 for the uh, month plus another 2 for the uh, day uh, plus uh, null terminating character. And in the front of it all, str len of the film's title, right? I could do all that and I could get it down to an exact science and uh, only uh, allocate enough space exactly for as much as I was going to store in this string, right? In fact, I, I like that. Since I already did the work, let's go ahead and do that. int n is equal to this thing. Now, is my, is my math right? Okay, hopefully it is. Uh, if not, then we'll come back and change it. And now it's going to be n times size of char. Okay, let me back out there. Is that still readable in the back? Yes, okay. All right, so my result here is exactly the way that I need it. Now, here comes, uh, here, here comes the tricky part. If I want to go ahead and put the title in, then I would need to do an strcpy into result the uh, film's title, right? Uh, and then after I've done that, str cat uh, uh, released on blah, 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 and then uh, uh, on to result. There we go. And uh, then finally, I would have to do something about this, uh, uh, this formatting in order to get it into my string. Right? I don't want to do that. I really like printf. Why do I really like printf? It does a lot of the hefty, heavy lifting for me. How did we do file output? fprintf. In other words, we used a version of printf that printed to a file. So printf, without that f there, that prints to the standard output. Print, fprintf, that prints to a file. Guess what? There's yet another version called sprintf or sprintf. What do you think it prints to in this case? A string. All you have to do is print to this result Use the exact same uh, behavior here uh, as you're used to, and it works. Right? Reuse what you already know. Printf, fprintf, sprintf. 
In fact, there are a couple of dozen other uh, variations on that as well. Uh, SN printf, FN printf, et cetera, et cetera, uh, that we won't get into, but this is, this is mighty nice. It takes care of all that stuff for me. Yeah? Uh, it does, uh, yes. Uh, and it's not const pointer, it's, it's a char star because it is going to be making changes to your string. Uh, but anyway, the, uh, the result here is stored in this string here. Now, maybe I don't want that inline character anymore, okay? Uh, because, uh, I, I, well, it's, it's up to you now. I mean, it, it, you want to print it to a file or you want to print it to a, uh, uh, the standard output. It, it's up to you on whether or not you want to print that, uh, that inline character, right? So now I can go ahead and use this film to string of joker. And I'll go ahead and capture that, char star s is equal to this. And I'll go ahead and print it out, printf uh, percent s. And then I'll put the end line character in there because I really want it, OK? And once I've done this, I should get the exact same result as before, and I do. But it's way more general now. I can reuse all of these functions. And if I want to print out to the standard output, I want to print out to a file, I want to print out somewhere else. Uh, this is much more general because all it does is converts my, uh, my, the in, an instance of my uh, structure into a string for me. And then it's up to me on what I want to do with that string. Now, if I were to run valgrind here, what would valgrind tell me at line 55 about this string right here? That I didn't clean it up. Right? If you want to, if you do want to print something, well, let me go ahead and restore that other function that we just have. Tr avoid uh, print film, right? And then const film star f, right? If I wanted to print it, I would do something like this. I'll go ahead and put that in there. Uh, and then uh, order matters here. So I'll go ahead and move this down. There we go. And not joker, but f. Now, what would Valgrind complain about here? You created, here's, a, here's the film, you created a string representation of it, you printed it to the standard output, but what did you do afterwards with that string? You returned and then what, it's still on the heap somewhere. What do we call that when we lose a reference to, a me to memory that hasn't been cleaned up yet? That's a memory leak. So let's clean that up and make Valgrind happy here. How do I do that? I free up S, uh, S after I'm done with it. And now I can go back to what I had before, print film joker. And it will work exactly as before. But I've made sure that I've got, code, uh, I've got the potential for code reuse. I can reuse that to string function anywhere that I want to convert it to a string and concatenate them all together and then dump it to a file or something like that. Okay. Uh, alternatively, uh, so uh, I will be copying all of this over. Uh, let me go ahead and write another function. Um, and I'll call it init uh, film. And then we'll, oops, we'll come back and we'll fill it in here. Let me describe what I want to do with this, this function instead. Uh, so it's kind of a companion to the create film. Uh, this, uh, this function uh, uh, initializes, spelled it correctly, initializes the given film uh, film with the given values. In other words, look at the original that we did here, uh, the, the create film. We dynamically allocated memory to hold the uh, data based on this film. Uh, now, an alternative would be, what if the calling function already did that? What if the calling function had, say, a, uh, a, 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 a film allocated on the stack? And they just wanted to fill in the title. They wanted to fill in uh, uh, the date, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, we, uh, the calling function did this part already for you. It's going to give you the film, and it's going to say, all right, initialize it with all these values. Just load these values in there for me. Right? That's what we're going to try to do with this alternative here, init film. Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to have a film that is passed by reference. Now, should I put a const in front of this? I'm going to be making changes to this thing. And if I put a const in front of that, I won't be able to make any changes to this thing. Uh, but otherwise, it's going to be exactly the same as these up here. We're going to give a title, which will be const because we're not changing it. We're just copying it. Uh, a runtime in minutes, 
uh, gro box office gross, uh, release date, etc. Now, in this case, I'm not going to be returning anything, so I'll just make a void here. Now, you, what you could do is you could return an integer in instead. Why would you want to return an integer again? Error codes, right? You gave me a, a null for a title. That's bad data. I'm going to return an error code back to you. You gave me a negative value for a runtime, right? <laughs> a movie that goes, uh, the, you start the film and then it goes back in time. That doesn't work like that. Uh, box office gross, I guess that could be negative. So <laughs> if you lose money on it, uh, right? Oh no, the net could be, uh, the gross would always be zero or above, right? It would be the net that would be negative because you spend a million dollars on it, you didn't make anything, so your net is uh, negative. Uh, so, uh, but in any case, uh, the release date, uh, what if I gave you uh, 2019 13 25, uh, 35? Is that a valid date? Is there a 13th month? It's March? No. Uh, so I could do some error checking here as to the runtime that you gave me, the box office, the release, it's, uh, the title. Any, any invalid uh, values that, I'm gonna, uh, that you give me, I could return an error code for that. Uh, I'll let you do that as an exercise in your own, though. So I'm, give, I'm given this film here. I'll just go to the next line. And I want to start, fill, I'm going to make sure, uh, I could also check to see if this is null or not. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling it with those values. F, uh, uh, it's title. Uh, I need to create uh, a new, uh, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to cut and paste. Right? This, is, this does it all for me, right? There we go. And... Where, where are we? Copy, pasta, there we go. And then return. All right, that's a huge red flag. Copy, pasta, the copy, pasta wasn't bad in and of itself, uh, but what's the problem here? These, one, th these dozen lines of code or so, I'm repeating it here and I'm repeating it up here. Should I do that? That's a violation of the DRY principle, the don't repeat yourself principle. So let's take a step back and think about how can I avoid redundant code? In other words, one of these functions may be able to call the other function. Which one? Should init call create, or should create call init? Which, one's, which one does more work? Uh, oh, which one does more work? This is doing one more line than this is doing down here. So this one's actually doing more work, right? This is more, if you're doing more work, you're more general, right? This is more specific. This is, this is uh, assuming that you've already created the film. Well, if I've already created the film on line 24, do I need to repeat this code down here? I could replace all that with what? Init film f, and then return it. Right? Uh, then, of course, I have to properly take that up to the top uh, ooh, what are you complaining about now? Uh, conflicting types for init film. Yeah, there's conflicting types because there's no prototypes. I should be doing prototypes on everything. I'll go ahead and just move it up here to make the compiler happy for now. All right, there we go. So you have the more general calling the more specific. Init film, what's wrong with you? Two few arguments to the function? Oh, duh. I need to pass everything in. Title, run time, minutes box, office, gross, and release date. There we go. So two solutions that do very similar things. Uh, but one of them is, for, uh, by, by, by doing both of these solutions, I'm making my, li my film library uh, that I'm building here, I'm making it more flexible. You want to create, uh, you want to do your own memory management and create your own film, uh, and then, pa then pass it off to an init, fine, that's, that's on you. If you want me to do your memory management, memory creation at least, for you and give it to you, then great. It's, uh, I, I can do that for you. But speaking of memory management, say that I've created this film called The Joker. I print it out. And now I want to clean up after myself because I'm done with it. Free Joker. There we go. Now, think real hard. Does that clean up all the memory? Let me go ahead and cut and paste this. And I'm going to open up and just show you one more time, just like I showed you on Wednesday, I believe, or maybe it was the previous Wednesday, Monday, maybe. I forget when. Uh, I'm going to show you Valgrind one more time. All right. 
film demo.c, cut, paste, everything. There we go. GCC, G, film demo. All right, everything is fine. And of course, it's fine too. No, there's no seg faults or anything like that. But let's go ahead and run valgrind uh, a.out. Right. Definitely lost. Six bytes. Six bytes. I wonder what here is six bytes. J O K E R five plus a null terminating character. That adds up to six. Why are we losing that? Let's walk through this. I create Joker, which in turn creates a, uh, up here, it creates a, uh, what else does it create? A new title, Joker, with six bytes. Down here, when I clean up after myself and I free up Joker, is that title, the jo I've got a pointer to Joker, Joker is pointing to the title, is that, uh, what am I doing? I'm, I'm deleting this thing. What about, that, uh, what about that string over there? Was that deleted? Nope. So what do I need to do? I need to first free Joker's title. Then I can free up Joker. Let me go ahead and make that change over here as well. And we'll see if Valgrind is much happier with that. I need to free Joker's title. Title. There we go. And then I can free the actual uh, uh, structure itself. Run that again. OK, no changes there. But when I run Valgrind, right there. Any bytes lost now? Nope. I cleaned up completely after myself. Now, if I have several strings in there, I would want to clean up all of those strings. And if it's getting complicated, in fact, I'd argue that, that two lines is complicated already, maybe we also want to have a void uh, free film, right? And uh, film, film, star f, and put those uh, put those two lines in there, that, so that I can reuse this over and over and over again. And if I never, uh, this this is generally called a destructor. So in object-oriented programming, I, I call them factory functions, where we're creating a film. Uh, th th those in object-oriented programming, those are generally called constructors. Well, what's the opposite of constructing something? Constructing something destructing something. So this is kind of a destructor where you are cleaning up after yourself and making sure that each and every single one of those is cleaned up. And of course, if you want to be ultra safe, you would do no pointer checks in here before you do this. Make sure that the title actually exists before you free it up because freeing a null pointer is undefined behavior. Make sure that F is not null before freeing it up or even before uh, accessing the title. Pretty good library that I've set up here for, so far to represent films, right? Okay, let's see. So I will go ahead and make sure that all of those things are over, and let's review what we've ha what, what we've done so far. If you have a regular old uh, structure, right? Say, for example, film f, right? Then, what operator do I use to access the member variables? Use the dot operator or the arrow operator? The dot operator to access its members. If you have a pointer to a structure, that is film star f, then use the, what's the, what's the only other one? The arrow operator. In other words, this uh, hyphen and then the greater than sign that forms an arrow when you use them together uh, to access its members. Right? In general, general, create as many functions to help you create, print, and destroy your uh, structures. Right? Just create a general library. Uh, uh, if you find yourself uh, creating uh, creating two of them, well, th then go ahead and create a, make a function to do that for you. Uh, and you can make as many functions as you want. One of them to uh, do the memory manage uh, memory creation for you. One of them that just initializes for you. All right. Uh, let's see. So uh, all, uh, also, you may find it uh, helpful uh, or convenient to create a deep copy 
uh, function for your uh, structures. For example, if I've got a film, uh, film called The Joker, and I want to copy that over because I want to manipulate and change it somehow, but I don't want to manipulate the original. Right? We've done this now several times with deep copies of strings, deep copies of arrays. Right? If you don't have a deep copy, you have uh, references to the same uh, array, what, what kind of copy is that called? What's the opposite of deep? Shallow copy. Where you may, because they're referencing the same thing, if you make changes to one, it's reflected with the other. So what, what would a deep copy function look like as far as the films go? Well, it would return a new film, right? F, or uh, um, I don't know, copy of film, right? There we go. And const film uh, star F. I want to make a deep copy of that film. Any ideas on how to do that without repeating myself too much? I could come up here and copy paste all this stuff, but I don't want to copy pasta. Instead, what could I do? Return. I call to that function. Create film. What would I pass it? F's title. F's release date, or uh, what, what was the order? Uh, Runtime in minutes. F's box office gross. F's date, release date. There we go. And it does it for me. Uh, what are you complaining about now? Uh, integer, uh, okay, because it's up there. No, it's up there. Uh, title, runtime, minutes. Uh, it's up there. I've got it. This is all happening because I'm not, uh, I should be doing uh, H files, but REPL, it's kind of inconvenient to do that. But this will run and this will work. Uh, it's just complaining about this because there are no prototypes here. Um, yeah, film star. Why are you not working? Create film returns a film star. All right, it's just not working because of uh, prototypes. Don't worry about it. All right, that's why it's green. It's a warning instead of a. Uh, uh, it's warning me that I'm not I'm not following good practice and I'm not separating things out into an H file and a, and a source file. But of course, in practice, you would do that. So you can also have a helpful deep copy of your structures. Uh, anything else that you would want to maybe do with structures? I've got one film, Joker. I've got two films, three films, four films. How would I want to collect those films into, I don't know, the top 10 films of 2019? Where would I want to put uh, store all those things? In what? Arrays of structures, right? So for this, I'll just go into code mode here and forget about uh, uh, REPL for a second. Uh, what I want to do, here's my, goal, here's my first goal. Create an array that can hold 10 films. Well, if I did this with integers, what would it look like? Let me go ahead and put n into uh, a variable here. If I did this with integers, it would look something like this. Int star, call the malloc uh, n times size of int. And then I would have enough room to hold 10 integers. What would it look like for films, though? Film star, films, right? And by, the, by putting an S there, I'm telling you that this is an array rather than a single film, a, a single pointer to a single film. Uh, and how would I call it? How would I call malloc now? Would I go int star? No, that doesn't match the left-hand side. I would want film star. And you want n of them? OK, size of. Well, not int. How many bytes does it take to, uh, to represent a film? Size of film. Right. And now, once you have this, oops, there we go. Once you have this, each one of these things is a regular old film. Each element in the array is a regular old structure. So for example, if I wanted to set the title of the first one, films sub zero, or the, let's say the, uh, not the release date, but the gross of box office gross, I could set that to uh, a buck 50 or something, All right? There we go, terrible film, didn't make any, that doesn't even buy one ticket. <laughs> uh, but uh, why did I use the dot operator? Because the first one, 
this zero right here, that dereferences it and gets you the first one. If you want the second one, just like any old array, two, three, four, all the way up to the last one, which is nine. Right? And because you are dereferencing it, this makes it into a regular old structure. If you've got a regular old structure, then you use a dot. Right? And then, of course, you can, uh, you, you can proceed from there. Well, you can, uh, now that I've got a regular old structure, I can go ahead and call that init film. Right? Uh, films sub zero, uh, and then joker. What was the rest of it? Uh, uh, Runtime, 128 minutes, uh, 300 million, whatever. I'll put, just put 3,000 there. Uh, and then the last one was the date. So um, what was it, 2019, uh, uh, the day, the month, the year. So 1, 10, 2019. You can do this in line, too, if you want. Right? In fact, to show you the, uh, that this works, let me go ahead and take it back to REPL. There we go. And 10. I'll hard code that over here. Uh, it's not going to work that way. Expected expression, fine. I'll go ahead and put it in the date D. There we go. Except now, it is complaining. What is it complaining about here? This, yes. What, what, what type is this again? Because I dereferenced it. This is a regular old structure. Does init film take a regular old structure? Let me go back up. Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Does it take a regular old structure? Nope, it takes a pointer. So how can I take a regular old structure and turn it into a pointer? Star operator or ampersand? Ampersand. And now it's perfectly happy with this. Right? Let me go ahead and put that in the notes, that you need the ampersand. And of course, you can't do this apparently. I thought you could do this in line, but apparently not. Date d equals this. And then I'll pass in d. So lots, uh, lots of, build, uh, lots of uh, moving parts here. You just have to remember the big question. Do I have a regular old structure, or do I have a pointer to a structure? And that dictates everything. Do I use the dot operator or the arrow operator? Right? Uh, do you, uh, if I'm passing it to something that requires a pointer, do I need to reference it or dereference it? If I'm passing something that, uh, by, uh, uh, by value instead, do I need to dereference it or, uh, or, uh, or reference it? Right? In this case, I'm referencing it because it requires a pointer to it. Okay. All right, so summary. All right. Remember the principles of design. Right? When defining or designing a structure, think about the essential, uh, think about the uh, essential pieces of data that make up that structure. For example, you identify each field or member variable, right, uh, it, uh, and their type. Right? So when you're thinking about a film, we thought, you know, we went, I went around and asked, what, what, what is a film? Uh, and of course, the first thing somebody said is a title. Well, okay, what's a title? Well, that's a string, right? Then somebody said a genre. Well, OK, what's a genre? Well, you could represent that as a string. Or maybe the genre is an entirely different structure. Right? Because you've got a genre, you've got a subgenre, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Uh, well, there's also a release date. Well, what's a release date? Well, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, a, a year, a day, uh, and a month. Well, that tells me right there. There's a, big, there's a big red flag that if I've got three things, I should probably collect those three things together and put it into another structure. Right? So the, the, you decompose compose a structure into smaller and smaller parts right? or substructures structures right? until either it is representable by a primitive type, that is an int, double or char or uh, one of the or a char star or something like that. Or there is a solution already for, there for you. For example, date or date time. That seems like it's so useful and ubiquitous and used all over the place that maybe there's maybe it's built into the standard library, and it is. Uh, there is a time library. Uh, when you uh, pro when you uh, in fact I think that. Uh, 
Did you use it in? No, you didn't. I don't think that we used it in the last lab as a preview, but you'll definitely use it, uh, or it, it, we'll, we'll suggest that you use it uh, in the background uh, on a future lab. Uh, you may not want to use it directly, but uh, we show you how to use it. It's like uh, date underscore t. Underscore t is a convention that uh, C uses to uh, denote a built-in type. Underscore t, t stands for type uh, that you're not supposed to, uh, that you're supposed to use, uh, but you're not supposed to use it directly. Right? Uh, and there is one built-in type. Right? Again, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, if there is a built-in uh, structure for you, use it in general. Right? Uh, the semantics of a, uh, of a real-world entity will dictate its design. That's just the process that we went through. Uh, what is a person? Well, a person, first name, la a person has a name. Right, uh, and you might be tempted. Well, it's just a name, right? But what happens when you want to sort people by their last name? Oh, okay. Well, maybe we want to separate those two things. So, first name and a last name. And if we're going to have a first name and a last name, maybe we want an initial, middle initial, middle name. Right? Uh, maybe we want to then expand that out in a, a title, right? Uh, Mister, Mrs., Doctor, whatever. Uh, maybe we want a suffix, junior, senior, uh, the third, right? So maybe we want all these things and we can start expanding it out and deciding what is this piece of data? What, what should we include in this? Uh, we want a birth date. Okay, we'll, we'll reuse our date uh, structure that we already designed or we'll use a built-in type. Uh, and you just start to uh, think about, well, think about the real world object and what are the semantics of that object, right? What is a person? What is a film? What is a student? Whatever you want to model. And when, when you start listing things out, that as, uh, the, the essentials that make up that person, then that's going to dictate your design. Right? And so it, it's, it's, it's nothing more than thinking about what is in the object or what is in the thing. And finally, don't over-engineer. Right? Uh, or uh, you know, don't add things just to add things. Uh, this is another acronym that I like. Yeah, I need to make sure that I get it right. YAGNI. Right? All right. So uh, th that process that I was just describing of, well, first name, last name, that seems pretty good. You can go overboard. Middle name, uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we want to support it when, for people like me who have two middle names, so four names, uh, and also uh, uh, a title and a suffix and uh, three other fields that uh, you know may be culturally specific, right? You can go ahead and over engineer and go overboard. And in the end, of, at the end of the day, when you actually print stuff out, you're only printing the last name and the first name, right? You over engineered it because you're never actually going to use that stuff. Yagni, you ain't gonna need it. Or you aren't going to need it if you want to be more uh, grammatically correct. You ain't going to need it. Yagni. Uh, don't prematurely over engineer things. Uh, only think of the essentials first. And once you've thought of the essentials and uh, then uh, you go through several iterations of design and you, uh, you know, and then a customer or something says, well, wait a second, why isn't it printing out the uh, middle name? Oh, okay, you wanted to support the middle name? We'll go ahead and go back to, uh, and uh, redesign it and, uh, and add that in there for you. Right? Uh, only when you actually need it do you, uh, do you implement it. Right? And by the way, in the real world, this is a back and the forth between the, um, the client. You, you, know, you get your uh, business case and use cases. Uh, do you want to support a, uh, a title in, you know, like Mr., uh, Mrs., whatever, whatever, whatever? Do you want to support a suffix in your names? Right? And when you get a yes or no to all of these things, then you can say, okay, well, it was in the requirements. They wanted it, so we'll go ahead and put it in there. And a really bad situation is when you don't ask, uh, suss all those things out with your client and uh, with the person that you're, the stakeholder that you're working with. And uh, you don't know, well, uh, do we want to support a middle name? I don't know. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and throw it in there just in case, right? That's over engineering, uh, just to be careful. And when, uh, at the end of the day, Yagni, you ain't going to need it, right? So it's always a fine line. Don't over engineer, don't under engineer. Just be Goldilocks about it. Just be right there in the middle. All right. All right any questions on uh, encapsulation? No. Okay. Uh, miscellaneous, I guess. Then. All right.
you can all have uh, uh, you can also have arrays of pointers to uh, structures. Right? See the text. Right? I'm not going to do that because that's kind of <laughs> that kind of gets in the agony. You ain't going to need it. It's kind of over engineering. Uh, but basically, what it would look like, what it might look like, would be the following. Uh, let's see, we're dealing with films here. So film, star, star, array of pointers. That looks familiar. Where have we used star, star before? With two-dimensional arrays, right? We've got, what, what did this star, star do? It pointed to an array of pointers. Each one of those pointers pointed to a row or pointed to a string, a row of characters or something like that. You can do the same thing. If you've got an array of pointers, each pointer only has to point to one thing. Uh, and there is a, a distinct advantage of doing in something this way. Uh, for example, if you're sorting things and you want, uh, and you, you have this structure, uh, you, this film and this film, and you want to swap them because they're out of order, right? Do you want to swap 40 or 50 bytes? Well, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, or do you want to just swap a pointer over here so that instead of th this one pointing to this one and this one pointing to this one, you can just swap their pointers and they're pointing to do different things. You're not moving anything around in memory. Sometimes that's a little bit better alternative, but I'm not going to cover it in detail in lecture. Uh, instead, go ahead and read the book, and I think I put it in the videos too. Right? Uh, so th you can have an array, of uh, an array of pointers to structures if you really want. Uh, and finally, I think... Uh, oh yeah, miscellaneous, uh, make, make uh, in general, uh, uh, structure declarations are placed into header files right? uh, along with all of their uh, uh, function prototypes that operate on them. And uh, then of course uh, de uh, function definitions are placed into a source file. Okay? There, yeah, there we go. Uh, got it. Uh, yeah. It's a pretty short module. Uh, th th there are only three videos associated with this. Uh, so if you need to, I think in the videos we do a student instead of a film, uh, I just switch it around. It's very easy to do this stuff. Well, next year I'll do an album. Uh, the next year I'll do, let's see, films, albums, uh, TV shows, maybe, I don't know, books. There we go. That's the other go-to. Uh, and so you can switch it around and, you know, what think about each one of these things and uh, what they are. One thing that we didn't do here is, in general, in general, objects or structures also need identity. So does anybody know how you identify a film? The title might be a go-to, uh, but the, you can have a, you can have a fil multiple films with the same title, right? Uh, not necessarily sequels, but people reuse the title. Uh, what was it the other day I just saw? I was like, we, we were flipping through the channels. Oh, hey, there's that movie. And no, it, it turns out it was uh, the remakes, right? Yeah, that, that always happens. Uh, the way that you can identify a, a movie, I think that there's a, a what is it? Uh, film identification numbers. How would you identify a, a book? That's much easier. Uh, ISBNs. These are the ISBNs of uh, film identification. This uh, this might be it. I'm not sure. I forget. Uh, film uh, uh, process. Uh, yep. I don't know. No, this is not it. Film identification. Uh, movie. Movie. Oops. Movie identification numbers. There's a way to do this, and I forget what it was called. Uh, movie identification? No. Darn it. There's a way. It's basically like ISBNs, uh, and they, they, there's a, a central authority that uh, that ge generates these numbers and hands them out. And generally, that's how you identify structures as well. You bring something unique in. Uh, how would you uniquely identify a student at UNL? An NUID, right? How would you uniquely identify uh, a, a, a U.S. Pers a citizen or a uh, permanent resident? How are you identified, most of you? Social security number, right? You're not supposed to use it, right? 
uh, and uh, ISBNs for books, right? So you can incorporate these things into your objects, and then you can create a whole bunch of other functions on is this thing equal to that thing or or whatever, right? Okay. Uh, those that, those are pretty much all of the miscellaneous stuff. Um, okay. Questions? Otherwise, I'd have to look up what's next. Let's see. Uh, Canvas. For Wednesday, it will be uh, recursion. Okay. So let me go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. And let's start over with just a very, very brief motivation for next time on Wednesday. Int main. There we go. So what I want to do, here's my goal. Uh, do a countdown, uh, write a program to perform a countdown blast off. Right? So from you know, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, dot, 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 1, blast off. Right? So let's write that program together really quick. Let's just do a for loop. For int i equals, where should I start i? If I want to count down from 10, 10. i is greater than or equal to 1. OK. i plus plus, minus minus, all right. And printf percent d and the line i. And then at the end, printf blast off. There we go. Run that. Yay, we did it. All right. Now dot, 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 without using any loops. OK, so I'm not allowed to do this anymore. How do I do it now? I'm not allowed to use loops. Conditions, OK, but that doesn't change anything, right? Now, here's the, here's the smart aleck way of doing it. What? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, blah, 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 blah. Nope. No, you got still got to do it correctly. Don't hard code anything. So, probably not hard. No hard coding, no loops. Conditions probably aren't going to help me uh, at least initially. So, what's left? Uh, what did we What did we cover in this course uh, in the very beginning? So, uh, variables. Okay, yeah, probably definitely going to want to use a variable, right? And operations minus minus. Sure, I can still use that stuff. Then we went on to conditions, loops, but I'm not allowed to use those things directly. What did we cover next? Functions. What if I had a function to do something like this? Right? Int or void count down. Right? What if this function, say, printed or uh, let's print the given number and then calls another function to print the next number, dot, dot, dot. What would that look like? So if I'm going to give it a number, I should definitely say give it n. Right? And if I want to print n, then printf percent %d. That's exactly the code I had before, n the line, n. And if I want to start out my countdown at 10, then I go, I'll go ahead and call countdown on 10. But now I want to print 9. Well, again, here, here's how you could do this, the smart, uh, the smart uh, alloc way of doing this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, right? 8, 7, 6. Uh, that, we're not going to do that, though. Right? We're not going to hard code even when we're calling a function. Right? So when I get into this function, it's going to print out 10. I want, a, I want to uh, call a function then to print out 9. Do I have a function to do that for me? What if I called countdown on 9? That would do it. But let's keep it more general. If I'm printing n, then the next call should print out n minus 1. I've got a function calling itself. Right? That's called recursion. And it's completely valid, and it'll, it's, complete, uh, it's, um, it's a staple of a lot of programming languages. Uh, you just have to be very, very careful. What is this going to do if I run it? 
10, then calls countdown 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Does it print blast off then? Goes off to negative infinity. What do I need to do to stop the countdown so that I say blast off? Make a statement to check. If n is 0, then I'll print instead of the number, oops, instead of the number, I'll print blast off. There we go. And I don't want to continue. So if I don't want to continue, I can just return. And now, oops, blast off, blast off. Uh, oh, I got rid of my print statement. What, ha what happened to my print statement? Oh, OK, print f, blast. I, just, I reused it, I guess, blast off. And the line. Otherwise, I will print the number. Uh, I'll put it in an else statement here. Else, I'll print uh, percent d n, and then I will make my recursive call based on that. Now, there we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That second blast off is from that line right there. Now, I've not hard coded anything. If I want a blast off from 3 instead, that'll work just as well. If I want a blast off from 100, that will also work. Right? What if I want a blast off from negative 10? Let's walk through this. Negative 10, I jump into this function. Is n equals uh, is to 0? No. So we'll print out negative 10. Then we'll call countdown on 10, negative 10 minus 1 is going to be negative 11. And so what will happen? Again, the infinite loop. Right? I wish this were faster. Because uh, what's eventually going to happen here? Oh, okay, good. Is it going to keep, uh, it'll, uh, overflow in what sense? What's going to overflow? It'll eventually wrap around to, if you're thinking about number overflow, it'll eventually reach negative 2.147 billion and then go back to positive, right? Uh, but, oh, come on, are you done? Hopefully it died. No, it's still going, but hopefully it's dying on the back end. Because what's going to overflow before that? Think about what we're doing here. I've got a function calling it itself, calling itself again, calling itself again, calling itself again. Right? Each time I call a function, what's happening to that stack, uh, the, that stack uh, the, the, the program stack? New stack, new stack, new stack, new stack, new stack. What's eventually going to happen? I'm going to fill up the stack, and it's going to result in a stack overflow. And that's not what's happening here, but I could go ahead and repeat it next time on the command line and show you that that's actually happening. Oh, it, it did happen. It, it stopped, because now I've got my play button back. Uh, what does that kind of tell you? That you can make, at least in this case, you can make 261,000 and change uh, countdown calls. So you can have 261,000 stack frames that hold exactly one variable and no local variables. Right? Not that much. What if I created uh, some other variables here? Int, or let's say double y is equal to 3.14. Uh, hopefully it won't optimize this out. It probably will optimize it out. But now I'm, I'm creating uh, larger stack frames, so it should die much earlier. But uh, OK, it's being smart about it. And it's, uh, it's probably getting, uh, uh, getting rid of that number for me, unfortunately. Oh, OK, no, no, yeah, there. Much less. Why? Because each one of those stack frames was slightly larger. Right? If, I make it, if I make it even larger, double z is equal to 1.5, now I should get even fewer stack frames because there was 174,000. And now it should die much, much earlier. At uh, 60 some thousand? Uh, okay, and less. Oh, come on. Stack frames are much larger now. Okay, may now maybe it's being smart about it and getting rid of them. Okay, there we go. And it's exiting now, finally, it's exiting with a segmentation fault because of a stack overflow. Right? So when we come back on Wednesday, we're going to talk a little bit more about recursion. And I will, you'll get some practice, of course, next week and the, the next couple of weeks. But the takeaway lesson that I want to give to you in, uh, in CS1 
is don't use it. Uh, because recursion is actually, uh, it's actually extremely error prone. And of course, you're, what, are you, what are you doing? You're abusing the stack space. That's what I'm trying to get across here today. Uh, that you are cr creating new frame, new frame, new frame, instead of just doing a regular old for loop, which could have done it for us in the beginning. There are some languages where you do have to use recursion, but under the hood, it does it in a much smarter way. And only in those languages should you ever use actually use recursion.